Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this tutorial. How are you all doing? Hope you're doing good. <laughs> so in this tutorial, this is going to be a short, quick one, and this is super basic, but it's something that is often overlooked because 95% of people do this wrong, especially if you're just starting out. So that is how do you render your animation? Well, most people go over here and what they do is go to the render tab and click on the output and they render it as a movie. Now, if you've done that mistake, it's all right. I don't blame you. <laughs> I've done the exact same mistake and it's cost me weeks and hours of time because one of the reasons you don't want to do this is very simple. If you render it out as a movie directly, let's say your project takes a whole week to render. I mean, that's a good chunk of time right there. And you render it as a movie. What happens when your computer crashes? You guessed it. You don't have to be a blender genius to know this answer. <laughs> you lose your whole project and everything that's been rendering is lost. So you never, for the most part, want to render it as a movie. So for the most part, because in some instances, if it's quick and you know what you're doing, you can. So I'm going to show you exactly how to render your animation. First, I'm going to grab the default cube, bring it up and create a two second animation over here. Shift A, add a mesh plane, scale it up. And then we're going to go to the physics tab. I have another tutorial on physics. If you want to check that out, let's click on rigid body, change it to passive and change it to mesh. Once again, check out my rigid body physics tutorial as I won't go over these options because I want to keep this short. Click on rigid body on the cube and change it to leave it on active and change it to mesh as well. Basically, in short, what rigid bodies does is it makes the uh, the objects interactive with one, of her, with one another <laughs> as if it was real world physics. So passive means it's an object that doesn't move. Active means that it moves. So if we hit Alt A, boom, pretty cool, very simple. So there's our little animation right there. Now, how do we render our animation? That is the topic of this video right here. So the way you do it is you actually, believe it or not, you render your animation as PNGs or as an image file. Now you can use PNG or JPEG. I personally prefer PNG as they are usually smaller files and also the coding behind it is usually more practical than a JPEG. So PNG is usually the go-to image uh, that you want to render your animation to. And probably why it's set to default as PNG. Genius! <laughs> All right. So, and then of course I have another uh, tutorial that goes more in depth about the settings. For example, of course you have your resolution, your uh, the size of your render and everything and the um, let's also change this to cycles render because blender render is old it's obsolete we don't want it anymore and there's the sampling and everything as well so if we hit zero to go into camera view zero on the numpad that is and hit G uh, right click on your camera hit G and middle mouse click and zoom it out a little bit and bring it up with the G key. If we hit Alt A, you can see that this will be rendered out and our animation stops at about frame 40. So let's change our end frame right here to frame 40. Genius, right? And then right here, this is how uh, big it's gonna render it to. So right now it's gonna be 1920 by 1080 at 50% of that. If you want it fully 1920 by 1080, obviously you would put 100%. And uh, pretty self-explanatory, right? <laughs> and then over here, the sampling. Uh, these are the main options and also the sampling. This is basically how clear your image is going to be. If we do a test render by hitting F12, you can see that right now it's a bit grainy. And it's uh, right now you can see that it's rendering to 135 or 128 um, samples per Right now it's rendering to 128 samples per uh, per cube that it was rendering out or whatnot. 
So right now it's rendered at 128 samples. If we increase this to 500 or 400, I lied, 400, <laughs> you could see that it has a lot more, it's a lot clearer and sharper, except it will take a longer time because it's it has less noise to it. So basically this is the amount of noise that it will have. Now, one thing that you could do, I'm gonna hit escape to cancel this. One thing that you could do if you have a graphics card that supports this, you could go to file, user preferences, and this is a free little tip for you, free of charge. <laughs> you could go to system, and right here you could change compute device from none CPU to CUDA, which is your graphics card. Now, if you know anything about computers, I don't have to tell you that graphics cards are much faster than CPUs for rendering. So we could close that and then over here, we could change it from CPU to GPU. And now if we hit F12 once again, you can see that it renders out a lot faster. And I would hope so, because I well, this graphics card wasn't cheap. All right. <laughs> but even if you have a lower end graphics card, it will work. Uh, 10 times better than the CPU, so I suggest changing it. All right, I'm gonna turn back the samples down to 100, and I'm gonna leave it like that. So, now what we wanna do is basically select the folder where this is gonna be rendered out to, so change it, because this is where all the images are gonna be rendered uh, to this folder. So you wanna make sure, and uh, don't mind everything that's going on here. <laughs> I got so much projects I'm working on. All right, um, so select the folder, accept. I'm letting you guys see the way of an artist. All right, and now this is a critical part, the folder, because otherwise your images are gonna render out to a random place on your computer. And then basically just select PNG, and that's all you have to do, select PNG from here. And once that's done, select your start and end frame. And then what we're gonna do is click animation, and once we do this, it's gonna render all uh, all frames, frame one all the way to 40 in individual images. Now, I know that sounds crazy because you're uh, wanting to render it as an animation, but we're gonna do that very shortly. And what's cool about this is, first of all, two things. When you're rendering it as an image, if it crashes, you don't lose everything because when it crashes, you have the images. And if I go over here, you can see that if I go over here to the folder, you can see that all our images are being saved here. So what this allows for us to do is if it ever crashes, we have the last image that it rendered out or the last frame that it rendered out and let's say it crashes on day five of seven. Well, you could just pick it up from day five and render day five to seven instead of having to start all over again, which is the most painful thing in the world to have to re-render your whole animation. I don't want that happening to you. That's why I'm making this tutorial so that you save yourself some time and pain. So <laughs> we don't, I don't want pain for you guys. So that's the first thing. Another thing is that if you render it as a movie, and let's say a let's say a minute one to one minute and minute one to one one minute and thirty seconds. That's what I'm trying to say. You don't like how the animation looks. Well, if you rendered it as a movie, you're kind of stuck with that, and you're gonna have to re-render the whole thing for seven days. Well, at first you're gonna make the changes and then re-render the whole thing for seven days, which is again painful. But if you render it as images let's say from here to here is minute one to minute one and 30 seconds. Well, what you could do is tweak your animation and then just re-render those particular frames or images from minute one to minute 130 and place them into your folder with the other images and you're good to go. So do you see how powerful this is to render uh, as images instead of movies? Man, I'm super passionate about this. <laughs> it's crazy because uh, this is one of the simplest tutorials in the world, but um, 
I remember one time I rendered an animation. It was one of my first animations. I think it took me like two days to render or something. And then I had a problem and I realized I had to re or there was no sound or something. There was an issue and I realized I had to re-render the whole thing. And that's painful, especially if you're a new artist. So those are, that's why you want to render it as a, uh, as image files. All right. Now we've rendered all the images into our animation, quote unquote, because this isn't really an animation. You're probably thinking, Alex, you are crazy. Uh, how does this become an animation? Well, pretty simple. Have you ever gone into one of your folders and you click on an image and you press the right or left arrow to click to the next image? Well, check this out. This is how animations work. Basically, every single frame right here, even a movie, is rendered into single frames. It, like you hear in movies, it's like 24 frames per second. Right here, that's the case, 24 frames per second. And literally, that's all movies are. They're made up of individual single images that are compiled together. If you've ever done those flip notes or those little yellow flip, uh, you know, those little yellow flip notes and put stick figure animations, that's how it works. You see, if I open this image and then left click, uh, click on the right arrow to scroll through, and then if I just hold it, you can see that we actually have an animation going because it's flipping through the images so fast. So that's exactly what we're gonna do with Blender now. We're gonna basically, what's called composite, all these images into a movie now. So, and another thing that's cool about this is that now these images are saved into individual images and you actually don't need the original uh, Blender file. You could, you, you could do this on any Blender file, but we're gonna do it on the same one for the sake of this tutorial. So the way that we're gonna do this is go over here and click on Video Sequence Editor. All right, I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> and then here, we're gonna hit Shift A, add a image, and we're gonna go to where our images are saved. And now we're gonna click these one by one by Shift left clicking. No, I'm only kidding, guys. Just hit the A key to select all of them and click on Add Image Strip. And then hit the G key and move this to frame one. Now again, like I said, you could use this on a new Blender file. All you have to do is make sure that your settings are the exact same as the settings that you rendered your animation through. So it has to be the same size, the same amount of frames, the same frames per second. Otherwise, you're going to have some weird results. Now, what? Uh, so this is an image strip. It's basically compiled all the images together. The video sequence editor basically allows for you to, compi uh, to compile together images, sound, and movies, and all this together into a final animation or result. Now, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add sound to your animation, which is another super cool thing. Now, something that you could use to see how your animation looks, because here it's a bit tricky to see how it looks, you could click on Use Backdrop, and now if you left click and drag, or hit Alt A, you can see your animation playing out. All right, now that we got the backdrop happening, we could see our animation here, pretty cool. So how do we turn this into an actual video instead of still images? That is the question. Well, now that we have this in the compositor, you can see that if we go down here to post processing, you can see that we have an option called compositing, which is checked and sequencer as well. So the sequencer is the video sequence editor. And when this option is checked, it basically will take whatever is in the video sequencer editor and take that and render that instead of our 3D scene. So since we have this now, we could then go over here to PNG and change it to a movie file. Now, the one I usually use, and you can play around and use different kinds of movie files. We got H.264 over here. And you gotta click down the encoding panel right here so you, that you can see. But the one I usually use is either that one or XVID. Uh, I tend to just use XVID over here and change the codec to whatever you want. I usually leave it on MP4. And right here, you could change the format of it. So you could change it to QuickTime or AVI or MP4. Those are usually the three options used for the most part. You could also use H.264 as well. But the one I usually use is MPEG-4. And so now with that, all we have to do is go ahead and 
go up here and now click on animation. And now this is going to go super fast because what it's doing now is it's actually not rendering the animate uh, the images, but it's actually instead rendering just the uh, it's compositing all the uh, still images together. So now if we go to our folder, you can see that our images are now rendered out into a movie. Pretty cool. So that's basically how you would animate or render your animation within Blender. So once again, you render it out to images, then you take those images, put them in the video sequence editor, and render it out as a movie. This gives you a lot more control. It saves you from a lot of hair pulling and screaming when your project crashes, and it's just simpler and easier to do. So with that, in the next tutorial, we're gonna check. Uh, we're gonna check out and take a look if you want. We're gonna check out and take a look how to add sound to our animation, which is another cool little thing. So I'll see you there, ladies and gentlemen. Au revoir, ciao for now. And if you need help, leave in the comments down below a suggestion for a tutorial. I'm gonna be doing a tutorial on a suggestion that someone uh, suggested already. But if you have anything, leave it down below. Also, feel free to comment, like, subscribe, go like us on Blender Mania on Facebook, and also check out the Ultimate Blender Guide that I put together for you. Link in the description down below. It's a course from the A to Z's of Blender, so check it out. It's super awesome, and I'm not just saying that because I made it, but it is. All right, so with that, au revoir, my Blender Maniacs. See you in the next tutorial.